painted the Mona Lisa? I don't know. What is the capital of India? I don't know. What is the name of Kermit the Frog's nephew? I don't know. Who wrote Julius Caesar? I don't know. What is the English translation of Veni Vidi Vici? I don't know. In professional boxing, how long is one round? I don't know. Which planet is nearest to the sun? I don't know. Who invented the telephone? I don't know. What number comes after six? Ooh! I don't know. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? I don't know. Who starred as John McClane in Die Hard? I don't know. Cheddar, Stilton, and Brie are types of what? I don't know. How many players can a team have on a basketball court? I don't know. What is the highest mountain in the world? I don't know. What is your quest? I don't know. What is your favorite color? I don't know. Enjoy Church is a great place for your entire family. We have teachings that are appropriate for every age. Bring your little ones into our little fellows area. Kids in the garden get great supervision in an environment where they'll experience the love of God. In Papa's farm, your children will learn about the Bible in creative ways. And in Noah's Ark, they'll experience a hands-on approach to learning about God. Our Satellite Kids area is designed to immerse your child in lessons from the Bible using music, video, and plenty of playtime. Middle school and high school students can hang out at the Flashpoint Youth Center, where they'll build lasting friendships with God and each other. All of our student ministries are designed to help everyone in your family grow in their faith. So bring your family to Enjoy Church this weekend. Get service times, locations, and directions online at enjoychurch.tv. Hi, thanks for joining us today. I'm Stacy, and you're about to hear a great message from Pastor Darren. But before we get to it, we would love to invite you to come join us in person at Enjoy Church. We have two St. Louis area locations. We have one location in Alton, Illinois, and then a second in Collinsville, Illinois, at the Gateway Convention Center. For service times and directions, just head to our website, enjoychurch.tv. Also, if you would like a free DVD of today's message, we will gladly send you one free of charge. All you have to do is call the number on the screen or head to our website and click on the free DVD icon. Now let's get to Pastor Darren's message. Today, I'm so excited. We're starting a brand new series called Making Me Crazy. I know as we've been advertising this series, you've probably had a few faces pop up in your mind, haven't you? I know we all do. We all have those people. And if you don't have anybody, maybe you're the one, right? <laughs> no, that wouldn't be you. That'd be somebody else. But here's what we're going to talk about. This series is going to talk about the crazy makers, those people in our life that just have a tendency to drive us crazy. You know, the high maintenance people in our life, because we can't just run from them and we can't just, you know, move to the West Coast or the East Coast to get away from them. We have to learn how to do life with them. Today's message is about laying the foundation. The rest of the series will be all about how to deal with those people. Today, though, is about the wisdom and how to deal with yourself, how to prepare yourself, how to lay the foundation so that you have a structure and so that you have a core and, and, and kind of a home base, a true north, a place for you to reference your life. So in order to do that, how many of you know that would be called wisdom? In order to do that, we're going to go to the book of wisdom in the New Testament, that would be the book of James. And I want to read a verse to you out of chapter 3, a couple of verses, starting in verse 13. If you're wise, okay, and I'm going to assume that you are, and if you're not, you're going to hear the word of God and you will become wise. If you're wise and understand God's ways, you'll live a life of steady goodness so that only good deeds will pour forth. And if you don't brag about the good that you do, stop just a second. Have you ever heard anybody or seen anyone who does good and then they come and tell you all about it? <laughs> I'm just saying. Listen. <laughs> and if you don't brag about the good that you do, then you'll be truly wise. But if you are bitter, jealous, and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't brag about being wise. That's the worst kind of a lie. For jealousy and selfishness are not... God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, motivated by the devil. Forever, for wherever there is jealousy 
selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every kind of evil. The wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, it's pure. It is also peace-loving. It's gentle all the time, at all times, and willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no partiality, and it is always sincere. Those who are peacemakers plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of goodness. Now, we're going to talk about wisdom today for just a few minutes, because if we get this one right, if this one is right in our life, it lays a foundation to deal with the crazy makers in our life, those people in our life that just drive us crazy. And we need to know how to deal with them. And so as followers of Jesus Christ, if he said the most important thing in the world is for us to have a great relationship with him and a great relationship with other people, then how many of you know we should spend a lot of our energy and a lot of our effort learning how to do relationships at a higher level, at a better level, learning how to love each other, learning how to get along, learning how to encourage and build one, or, uh, one another up and not living through the filter of our own insecurities and our own jealousies and our own insincerity. And so that's what this is going to be. The evidence, there's evidence of wisdom in relationships and the evidence of that wisdom is not in your words, it's in your life. It's not in your lips, it's in your disposition. It's not in your diploma. There are a lot of educated fools in the world. <laughs> a whole lot, right? Now, the typical ways that we relate to one another where lack of wisdom shows up, it just mentioned bitterness, jealousy, selfish, selfish ambition, self-centeredness. Uh, in every relationship that we have, we are either, plant, we're all planting seed of some type. The question is what kind of seed? Seeds of trust, seeds of distrust. Seeds of anger, seeds of peace. Seeds of wisdom or seeds of foolishness. Let's go through these, these, this list. Number one, wisdom that comes from heaven. It says, the scripture says that wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all, it's pure. Pure means uncorrupted. It means that it's clean, unpolluted. It's clear, it's untainted. And so when we talk about this, you know, you talk about purity and it's really the foundation of all relationships and that is trust, truth. Because without truth, you don't have a relationship. That's, right. That's why in those moments where we violate our trust, where we violate truth, it takes a while for it to be rebuilt again. Now, sometimes the one that violates it and comes back and repents wants immediate restoration. But I want to be honest with you, and the Bible teaches us this, that it's kind of like respect. It's built and earned over a period of time. It, 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 it has to be built that way because once you violated the truth and once you have lied, you really have taken away the foundation of the relationship. Now, I know that hurts for some of us, but it, the good news is that it can be rebuilt by full disclosure. A great relationship has full disclosure. My wife and I, we share our, all of our passwords to our emails, our accounts. There's no secrets. She can get on my phone anytime she wants to. I can get on hers. There's no secrets. We don't go, hey, no, that's mine. What are you doing? How many of you know if you have that going on, you miss the health of a great relationship because that plants seeds of distrust. And so full disclosure, we talk to couples in our marriage counseling process oftentimes that have had a, uh, an affair situation happen or you know, something happened that has broken trust. And what we say, the way to rebuild that is to do full disclosure, where you will go above and beyond, where you make those phone calls and those texts. Here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm doing. Well, how long do I have to do that? Well, you got to do it for a while. How long's a while? I don't know, a, a year, two, maybe three, five. I don't know, but I do know this. One or two months won't get the job done. That's right. You got to have full disclosure, especially after it's been trust, trust has been broken. You've got to take it to a whole new level. Are you with me? Yes. Proverbs 2, 7 says, grant, God grant a treasure of good sense to the godly. He is their shield protecting those who walk in integrity. So here's the point. I will not compromise my integrity. There is no trust without truth. Your integrity is your most valuable asset internally. People 
are outside. Ephesians 4.25, you must stop telling each other lies. Tell each other the truth because you belong to one another. Number two, wisdom is peace loving. How many of you love peace? Have you ever met people that just love conflict and they love a good fight? I mean, I like a good fight if I'm at a hockey game. (laughs) And I like a good fight if I'm at an MMA or watching, you know, uh, UFC. I love a good fight then. But in real life, I don't like fighting. Let's all just get along. Come on. Anyway, what I'm saying to you is loving peace and valuing peace in the relationship. And here's how this plays out. You have to make a commitment to not antagonize their anger. And so if you want to lay a good foundation, a wisdom of a good foundation is to say, I will not antagonize you. Because do you know when you're related to someone long enough in a, in a relationship or you're with them, you figure out what their buttons are, yeah. right? Oh, you can, I mean, when you know people, you can push a button. And if you are a person who likes to agitate in a moment when it is convenient, you know exactly how to do it. Just, they're talking about something serious and you laugh at them. <laughs> oh, send them over the top, right? <laughs> or, or <clears throat> and nobody loves this to be compared to someone else in a moment. You know, you're correcting someone about something they've done and you say, you are just like, and then you name you know, someone who you know irritates that person. <laughs> And you go, you are just like your dad. You are just like your mom. How many of you want to hear that, right? Not in the context of correction. Not in the context of like, you're messed up. You're just like, and then you name another person. Or a friend in your life that really has this area of their life all jacked up. And you go, you're just like them. Ooh, that I want you to know takes away peace in the relationship. Don't do that. Another one is when you condemn someone and you lay on the guilt. I mean, you're laying the guilt on. In our marriage counseling, I don't do a lot of it personally anymore, but our pastoral care department does some of this. But one of the things that happens a lot of times in our, we hear this mostly from men. We hear a man say, she has become my conscience. She tries to correct me for everything that I think or everything that I feel. And I just want you to know, ladies, let me let you know something about your man. He struggles with his own conscience anyway. And his own conscience at times is an enemy within him. And he kind of resents himself for being the way that he is. And he has to work on his own self-esteem. And when you come along and you try to tell him how his thinking is wrong here, 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 and he's got this wrong and that wrong and that wrong, I want you to know he takes that, and this is all on a subconscious level, he takes this on a subconscious level and turns that resentment that he resents himself and he inadvertently begins to resent the conscience that now comes from the outside. I just want you to know one of the most valuable things you can do. I heard a, I heard a marriage the other day, uh, a testimony from a couple, and they both told the same testimony separately. And they said, how have you survived 50 years of marriage? And the wife said, you know, the best thing I can tell you is that he never tried to change me. He never tried to, he just... However I was, he just accepted me. And so the same interviewer, he goes over to the husband and he said to the husband, how have you survived 50 years of marriage? Have you done that? And he said the same thing. She never has tried to change me. And I want you to know in human behavior, you first of all, get this, get this. This is gonna be foundational for this whole series. You and I cannot change another human being. It is impossible. You don't have the ability to do it. You don't have the skill set to do it. And the more you try to change someone, the harder it becomes. All you can do is lead them. You cannot be a conscience for someone else. You got to let go and trust. If you really trust God and if you really love them, you'll let go. It's okay to speak some words of comfort and some words of love, but well, value peace. 
And then the third one is the contradiction. Have you ever, um, have you ever been around anyone who, in uh, a husband or a wife, and I've seen both do it, where one stands on the sideline and this one's telling the story and they, they correct the story all through the process? <laughs> have you seen that before? It's like they're telling the story. We were there and it was eight o'clock and they're going, no, it was 6.45. No, 6.45. You got that wrong. It was 6.45 and they're going, oh, whatever. Anyway, we were there and, and then it, it, they, were, they were driving a red car. No, it wasn't a red car. It was a purple car. And was, uh, whatever. And there, have you ever been around that? Do you know there are some things that just don't matter? Did you know that it's okay to let people be wrong? You don't have to fix and correct everybody for everything, right? Yeah, I, I get that. I, I could go there. I could do that. But it's okay. They got it wrong. They got the color of the car wrong. Big deal. Let it be a purple car. But truth matters to me. I value truth. I must correct the situation. It was, by God, it was a red car. Number three, <laughs> wisdom is gentle at all times. Philippians 4, 5, let everyone see that you're considerate in all that you do. Um, being considerate is really an antidote to foolishness. It really is. Think about that. Romans 15, 2, we must be considerate of the doubts and the fears of others. Let, let's please the other person, not ourselves. I love this verse doing what's good for him and building him up in the Lord. Here's where this comes into play. Being considerate of others is acknowledging the way someone feels. Have you ever had anyone try to correct you for feeling the way you feel? Yeah. Yeah. Now, feelings are just feelings. Yeah. Sometimes feelings are bad, but feelings are feelings. How do you judge someone's feelings? If you're feeling what you're feeling, you're feeling what you're feeling. Right. And then if you've ever seen anyone feel... Uh, for, you know, let me, let, me, let, me, let me bring this home. You'll get this, okay? Your wife says, I feel so ugly. I feel so fat. I feel so disgusted. And you look at her, and she is looking incredible. I mean, you like everything, and you like it all. And in your head, you can't even comprehend what she's saying. And when you belittle her and you say, you, you're, you are fine looking, but you are stupid. <laughs> you are discounting her feelings. Or maybe he comes home. He comes home from work and he's talking about how hard of a day he's had. And you know, wife, what a real hard day really is like. He's got this gravy train job and he had to deal with a few disgruntled customers. And so he begins to come home and tell you how horrible it is and you discount. You're a wimp. You're a wimp, boy. You ought to try staying here at the house and dealing with, you know, you get, you get the point, right? So relationships require us to not minimize, great relationships require us not to minimize the feelings of those that we are in relationship with. You can acknowledge them, but let me give you a little practical advice. How do you acknowledge when someone says something that you understand to be so far from the truth, but they're feeling what they're feeling, is to acknowledge it and go, really, you're feeling that way? What would make you feel that way? I, I don't understand that. What would, you are so beautiful. What would make you feel that way? You've got such a great job. What would make you feel that way? Give them a chance to tell you what they're feeling because what we'll, what we'll discover is what they're feeling is really something else. It's something else that is damaging their emotions of that day. And so give them a chance to talk. And then when they tell you that, ask another question. The next question goes like this. What would make you feel that way? It's the same question. Keep asking that question a few times and you'll drill down to possibly what the problem is. And what it usually is, is somebody's just needing a little bit of love. Somebody's needing a little bit of comfort. 
Tell me it's okay. Tell me it's going to be okay. Tell me I'm okay. And do you know we all need that? What I'm doing today for you in this series, now the next few weeks we're going to get into the other people. Today we're dealing with ourselves. Because if we don't get this part right, we can't deal properly with the rest of it. So don't minimize those those feelings to someone. Be gentle and be considerate. Number four, wisdom is willingness to yield to others. This is a hard one for a lot of us because it, it really, let me say it this way. The ESV translation says, be open to reason. The, the, the living Bible says, allow discussion. Don't be stubborn. Don't be defensive. But be wise, and the way you are wise is to listen. And you may have your mind made up, and you may know it's a stupid idea, but maybe it's not. And a person of maturity will always listen. You know you can learn from just about anybody? Did you know that? Did you know that even a clock that's broke is right twice a day? You can learn from just about anyone. Well, somebody's got something good that they can bring to the table. And a wise person is always willing to listen and not criticize. So here's what we make a commitment to today. We make a commitment in our relationships. I commit to not criticize your suggestions. I will listen to what you say. It doesn't mean that we have to do it, but we're going to at least listen and have some discussion, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to uh, have the attitude of help. Number five, wisdom is full of mercy and good deeds. And what I mean by that is we will not emphasize others' mistakes. We know this about humanity. We know this about you. We for sure know this about me. We all make mistakes. We make daily mistakes. We all have a lot of mistakes in our life on a daily basis, for sure, in our past. And what great relationships have the ability to do is move past the bumps of mistakes to where you don't hold a mistake over someone's head. So you forgive them. You release them. You relinquish them. You let that go. And that's what mercy is. God did that for you. The Bible tells us we in turn are supposed to do that for others, correct? Proverbs 17, 9, love forgets mistakes. Nagging about them parts the best of friends. No one loves harping and nagging. No one. No one enjoys that. And one of the fastest ways, if you think you're going to change someone by nagging at them and nagging at them, one of the fastest ways to push them away from you is to nag them. And so one of the easiest ways to pull someone back is to give them unconditional love and to bring them back. Well, I thought you said, Pastor, you've got to rebuild the trust. Yeah, if you're the one that broke the trust, you work on rebuilding it by full disclosure. But if you're the one that's been violated, you begin to extend mercy, to extend love to them. Speak it to them. Speak it to them. Um, don't go all historical on people. I heard this little, this 14-year-old kid that came home from school with his grade report, and, and uh, he got a, 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 a D on his report card. And his friend go, how did your dad handle the D? He said, oh, he went all historical. He said, you mean hysterical? No, he went historical. He brought up every bad thing I've ever done. <laughs> and sometimes that's the way it is in relationships. When we fail someone... At that moment of disgust, what we often do is we bring up all of the past hurts we've experienced from them. And that's not true mercy. Number six, let me give you the last one. Wisdom is impartial and always sincere. These two words, impartial and sincere, always sincere, are two similar words in the Greek. I put them in your notes. One is an actor that changed mask without hypocrisy. The word is uh, adokritos. And the other one is anupokritos. And this is where we get the word hypocritos, hypocrite from. And what this means is that it's a Greek theater actor who runs behind the stage, grabs a new mask, and comes out with a new mask. And then he goes out and puts a different mask on. And what... What James is saying, because they were very familiar with this, is James was saying great relationships have the ability to be authentic 
and genuine with one another. You don't have to wear a mask. You don't have to have pretense. You don't have to fake. You don't have to shine it on. Who you are is who you are, and you do. Don't disguise your intentions, in other words. God wants us today to value wisdom. And if we're going to, this is just the foundation for this series. I, I pray you're all able to come back through this series because we are really going to get into some good relations. I, I mean, some stuff that's going to help you in your marriages, in your friendships, with your children, with neighbors. This is going to be a great series. But today's foundation, if you don't get this one, you have to get the wisdom of how you need to be because we're gonna focus on how we relate to others, but this one is how we need to be and what needs to be valued in us. This is an important list that we go through. I really hope that that message spoke to you in some way. If you would like a free DVD of this message, we will gladly send it to you free of charge. All you have to do is head to our website, enjoychurch.tv and click on the free DVD icon. Also, we would love to invite you to come in person to either of our two St. Louis area locations. We have a location in Alton, Illinois, and then a second in Collinsville, Illinois. When you come to Enjoy Church, you are going to experience a fun-filled atmosphere with energetic music and people of all walks of life. You don't have to have a fancy suit or dress, just come as you are. We also have age-appropriate teachings for everyone from birth through high school, and our service times are only about an hour long. We want the best for what God has in store for you in your life. So please come and check out Enjoy Church. For service times and directions, just go to our website. Also, if you are in need of prayer or you know someone who's in need in prayer, please give us a call. We are here to help. We hope to see you in person at Enjoy Church, but we'll definitely see you here at the same channel the same time next week. God bless. Who painted the Mona Lisa? I don't know. What is the capital of India? I don't know. What is the name of Kermit the Frog's nephew? I don't know. Who wrote Julius Caesar? I don't know. What is the English translation of Veni Vidi Vici? I don't know. In professional boxing, how long is one round? I don't know. Which planet is nearest to the sun? I don't know. Who invented the telephone? I don't know. What number comes after six? Woo! I don't know. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? I don't know. Who starred as John McClane in Die Hard? I don't know. Cheddar, Stilton, and Brie are types of what? I don't know. How many players can a team have on a basketball court? I don't know. What is the highest mountain in the world? I don't know. What is your quest? I don't know. What is your favorite color? I don't know. Enjoy Church is a great place for your entire family. We have teachings that are appropriate for every age. Bring your little ones into our little fellows area. Kids in the garden get great supervision in an environment where they'll experience the love of God. In Pawpaw's Farm, your children will learn about the Bible in creative ways. And in Noah's Ark, they'll experience a hands-on approach to learning about God. Our Satellite Kids area is designed to immerse your child in lessons from the Bible using music, video, and plenty of playtime. Middle school and high school students can hang out at the Flashpoint Youth Center, where they'll build lasting friendships with God and each other. All of our student ministries are designed to help everyone in your family grow in their faith. So bring your family to Enjoy Church this weekend. Get service times, locations, and directions online at enjoychurch.tv.